may quickly become one of your favorites. It involves the production of movie in India and Argentina, as well as working on your production of your own life movie. There is also a romantic question from this girl. Please listen to it carefully. As usual, using earphones and headphones will maximize your pleasure. Enjoy and chill and have a great weekend. Hi. I want to tell a story about turning thoughts to things and also the way that I experienced the thought being a manifestation already. A while ago, maybe even a year ago, I had an idea to write a comedy, a romantic comedy set. I live in Buenos Aires, so set in Argentina and India, where I have a strong connection. And I just told people that much. I have a romantic comedy, Argentina and India. I only told one person the actual story, my film producer. And months have gone by, months have gone by. I keep telling people I have this idea, but I wasn't ready to write it or work or move any further, so I never tried. One morning I was exercising and listening to you, and I got the feeling, ah, it would be nice to begin to play with that idea. I would like a gentle nudge, I ask the universe and you, to move forward so it would be fun to sit down. So that night I went to the film class that I teach with the producer, we co-teach, and she said, you're not going to believe what happened today. They had called her from the Indian Film Commission as the only representative, they had come to Argentina to talk to her, someone from the embassy, she wasn't even clear who it was, someone representing 20 production companies in India because they're looking for a movie to shoot that's set in Argentina and India. <laughs> and they went to her and she's the only person on the planet that knew my story. And she pitched it and they loved it. And she said, so now you just have to write it. <laughs> So, instead of getting scared, I actually just sat down with the intention to receive, yeah. and the scenes came and came and came, and it was delightful and beautiful and wonderful, and it's yeah. a great film. Yeah. I called her and I said, it's going great, and she said, oh, well, you know, they actually said that they're interested in Mother Teresa and Argentina and India. And I thought, great, because I worked with Mother Teresa in Calcutta, and I thought, okay, let's go. And my producer said, maybe it could be about an Argentine nun who goes to Calcutta. With that idea, I went, I sat down, and I got another film immediately, which is about not a nun, but a girl who wants to be a nun, and her parents try to stall her by sending her on a trip around the world. And she says she'll go, but only if she can go to Calcutta with her best friend. So I wrote that whole story, loved receiving, so much fun, all the scenes. I went to my producer, I pitched the idea, she loved it. I knew that my producer had wanted to be a nun when she was younger, and so after she read the story, I said, we could talk about your experience, because I can use that in, as I write the actual screenplay. I had written a treatment. And she said, well, but did you know that I wanted to be a nun, but my parents sent me on a trip to talk me out of doing it. <laughs> so, is there any question about what's going on in this vortex? All the pieces are there. They've all been working together. The cooperative components have been working their way out. And then the most interesting thing, and we know that you mean to go back and speak to this yourself, but we want to stick this in here first, is that we've been talking about how there's this gestating of your vibrational reality and how law of attraction has already gathered the cooperative components. And you heard a scant spattering of those. There are so many more. This is gestating. It's becoming more and more and more and more and more. And the momentum is gathering. The cooperative components have already been set into motion. They're already in place. The Indian and the Argent and the, and the, and the, and the, and the already cooperative components that have already been gathered, all ready to be gathered. And then one day you get this idea. As you begin letting those thoughts turn to things in your mind. So as that thought comes, as you started to say to us, that was a manifestation that happened to you. Mm -hmm. And then more and more and more and more. This is the way it works. This is absolutely, we want you to know that 
Like our friend's story that you just heard, you have all of those stories too. How all of the pieces of your lives and the lives of the people you know, they're all there. They're all generated. They're all together. It's all so much more. And really, all you have to do is be living happily ever after enough that in this moment and this moment and this moment, in your joy, an idea comes. An idea that is so compelling that you want to do it. You didn't say, I felt that I needed to do it. You didn't say, I was trying to figure out how to do it. Did you hear how her story unfolded? Did you feel the lightness of her being and the readiness of her vortex and then the readiness of her and then the coming together of it and on and on and on it goes. And it's not just one film, it's another and then another and another. There's no ending to the joyful journey that will continue to unfold for you. No ending to it. It's not like just wanting something and it's in the vortex and somehow you make yourself to it and then boom, I've got the manifestation. Oh, it isn't like that. There's another and another and another and another. Always something else equally or more wonderful on the horizon for your discovery. It is such a delicious thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I had a moment when I had that feeling because I was in alignment when I had the fe I was in alignment when I first got the idea. It came with that energy. You had to be. And then I was in alignment when I got the desire to begin to write it. Yes. And immediately I heard this little should, and I just was like, oh, so what I need from the universe is a way to make it fun. I need something fun so that I can sit down, not the feeling, oh, you haven't written this all year, you know, none of that. Just what would make the next piece of it fun? Yeah. That's your best mantra ever. What's fun? And don't you remember, Esther remembers being really little, really little and saying to her mother, what should I do? And her mother would say, well, you could clean out that drawer. <laughs> and Esther would say, no, I mean, what's fun to do? What's fun to do? And her mother would say, well, cleaning out that drawer might be fun. And Esther would, no, that really wasn't what she had. But what's fun to do? What's fun to do? If you could get on that wavelength, what's fun to do? What would I like to do? What do I feel like doing? What's fun to do? What's interesting to do? What's exhilarating to do? What's fun to do? And sometimes it can start out as what's easy to do? What's easy to do? And I also love that when I got the idea, the meeting had already been set up. You know, well, of course morning. it had. All of the pieces were there for you before you received the first idea. That's what we're really wanting you to hear. You're not making this happen. You caused it to happen during contrasts that you'd lived and what you put into the vortex. It's already there. It's there for all of you. You're not making it happen. You're not setting a goal and making it happen. It's already happened. And you're in the receiving mode so that you're receiving the idea of what's already happened. And there hasn't been a better description in this format of explaining that in real time than what you just gave. You heard it, didn't you? Yeah. Something more? I had another manifestation a month earlier than that where completely free of resistance because I was cleaning up my thinking and I had been saying I was ready to date a lot of men and I realized that that meant I wanted to date a lot of near misses and I just was like, oh, I'd rather find a match and I wrote it out really clearly. Later that day, I had an impulse to send a text. Now, can you find also the correlation between how the other felt and how this felt? Yes. Yeah, same thing. And, and there was excitement in realizing yes. that my thinking was sloppy. And as soon as I realized, oh, I was asking for near misses. I was asking for a string of near misses. I don't want that. I want a match. And so there was no resistance about worrying. It was just excitement. I wrote down a really detailed description of this man. Later during the day, completely disconnected, had an impulse to send a friend request to someone who'd been in Cancun that I didn't meet but is on the uh, an Abraham page. We connected later that day. Still, you know, not a big deal. The next morning... I really felt a marvelous alignment. I exercised and listened to you and meditated, and I'd written, and I was really feeling great. Went downstairs, and that man and I chatted for about an hour, and I felt the feeling of feeling in love with my match. 24 hours later, I just was over the moon. I was so giddy. I called my friends. I was like, oh, my God, in 24 hours, I met my match. And my question is that immediately some old resistance showed up. 
And so that train, which was really rushing forward in the excitement and the yeah. fun and the pleasure yeah. and the love, and it felt so great and dancing in the kitchen, these other pieces also showed up from my past. And I was going to ask, in that moment, my response to it was to sort of look at those pieces. And I had heard you say one time that Esther said, oh, that thought is no longer useful to me. So I don't really need to think that anymore. Well, that was unnecessary and unhelpful, she will say. But my question is a little bit about that, the sweet spot or the point of when is it useful to actually look at the thought that comes up? Like, do I want to open up that locomotive that's going that way and see the engine and take it apart and say that's no, so it doesn't work or just stop putting coal in the, in the locomotive so it'll, like... Resistance is resistance. And when you're looking for it, you usually find it. There are a few things that we'd like to point out to you about this because the near misses part of your vibration was a little more active than you realized. And even though you did address it and you did manage to resolve it a little bit, so that sort of answers this last question, you did resolve it a little bit, still there was enough there that it sort of came up again. So this is the thing that we want you to focus upon. So as the impulse occurred to you, we want to say this to you. That's the difference between step three and step four. Step three, you can find yourself in a state of allowance, in a state of receiving, where an idea will come. But as the idea comes, you may not be able to sustain that idea because of beliefs that are still active. Mm -hmm. So this gives you an opportunity to acknowledge that and then sort of back away from it in order to allow yourself to get more in the receptive modes. But the question is, could your exhilaration over something else hold you long enough in the receptive mode on this new subject? Or do the active thoughts that are resistant in nature about this subject have to be dealt with? Each experience, you have to figure out whether your focusing on it is causing them to subside a little bit or whether your attention upon them is causing it to come more to the forefront. Good enough for that? In other words, you just sort of have to work that out on your own as long as you know what your goal is. Your goal is to find relief. Don't get too critically engaged in the outcome because the outcome will trip you up. If you stay involved in the way it feels rather than too activated about the outcome, then it goes better. We know that you got that to a large degree. And now we're going to give you something that's really going to help you get it all the way. And that is... You know how fortunate you are that you are able to relax and let a stream of thought flow and create a movie that will be on the screen. Your thoughts will turn to things. And life is exactly the same way. You can write, you can all write your movie. You all have a producer called Law of Attraction. And you all have endless funding called the energy that creates worlds. And you all have everything that is necessary to bring the cooperative components together. In other words, you have a staff, you have a team of non-physicals and currents and laws that are helping you turn your ideas about a movie into a full-fledged movie. You create your own reality, whether it's on the screen or whether it's something that comes into your life experience. So knowing that, that's why there was such power in what you wrote. And so you know how in a movie the scene will change and then you can write it again. Esther plays a game with her grandchildren and it's something that she learned when she was very, very young and she tells a story. Yeah, I jumped out of an airplane. And the other person says, oh, that is so good. And, or I fell out of an airplane. Oh, that's bad. Well, it's all right because I had a parachute. Oh, that's good. Well, no, it's not really good because the parachute did not open. Oh, that's bad. No, it's all right because there was a haystack down below me. Oh, that's very good. No, that's bad because there was a pitchfork in it. Oh, that's bad. No, it's all right because I missed the pitchfork. Oh, that's good. No, it's bad because I missed the haystack too. And so 
since Esther told this story to the children, now they want to play that game all the time. And so one of them will start a story. Oh, that's good. No, that's bad. No, that's good. No, that's bad. And they're all sort of practicing film writing, aren't they? So Esther was watching a television series that she likes to watch and something happened and she said, oh, that's good. And then there was a plot twist immediately. She says, oh, that's bad. And then it changed. She says, oh, that's good. And she began to laugh because this thing went good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad through the whole thing. And Esther is laughing because that's sort of the way the movie makers keep you engaged is they give you a problem to which they help you find a solution and then you feel better. And but it is sort of the way that the resistance helps you to continue to create and ask for more too.